Hello and welcome again, everyone, to our Wednesday news hour where we hear from social entrepreneurs and young change makers from around the world about timely topics and solutions. We are thrilled to have many of you joining today from Ashoka's global community and also a big welcome to those joining from CASA, ELIS RJ, AHA Project, and the Berlin Science Week community. So my name is Ara, and I'm here with two powerful young change makers from Indonesia and Brazil. Uh, for the next 30 minutes, the three of us will dive into the future of people and the planet through the lens of young people, where we'll not only be talking about the issues we are facing, but also some pragmatic solutions we have been doing with our team. Okay, um, so first, I'd love to introduce you to a friend of mine from Indonesia, Rafa, or the cool nickname is RJ. Um, we started our change-making journey around the same age, 10, 11 years old, uh, but I'm older. Uh, and he loves to play basketball, to cook, and he's also a gadget enthusiast. I remember when he told me that one day there was a point where with a pile of electronic devices in his room over the years, he was puzzled by how to properly dispose of those electronics, which was not a common knowledge in our country. And as he looked further into the issue, he learned about the danger of e-waste and the gross neg negligence of tech companies and the government for it. So with the help uh, from his family and friends, RJ started e-waste RJ to do three things, campaign, collect, and circulate, which will be you know, explored further later. Um, he was a speaker at COP22 in Marrakesh before, and will also represent Indonesia actually right after this session um, in this year's COP26 as well. Hi, RJ. Welcome. Hi, Kara. Hi, hi, everyone attending. This is amazing. You know, um, discussions like this is what what's makes my day exciting. And I'm excited for today. So, Kara, thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. And since you've already introduced me, I'm going to introduce you to another friend all the way from Brazil. And this is what really Ashoka gives us. They connect with, there's just no limit. I can know someone from Brazil in the tip of a finger. And everyone, please welcome Luan. Luan comes from a very small town in the interior of Pernambuco. Is that how I spell it? Am I right? Okay. <laughs> Growing up in a low-income family and community, he lacked opportunities many would find essential in today's world, such as taking English coursework. However, recognizing the value of education, he studied on his own and eventually began to immerse himself in learning about social issues. The more Luan learned, the more he was determined at the potential of young people to solve social problems. Starting with a few like-minded friends, Luan founded Casa social support center which is a group of young people that focused on social and environmental issues in their community luan's team distributes necessary goods to families in the wake of natural disasters offers environmental education for community members to prevent public waste promotes ecological and beautification projects and reduces hunger through reforestation in the northeast region of brazil i'm out of words that is crazy Luan, hi, how are you? Oh, thank you so much. I feel so glad you, you introduced me and so good to, to be here. I'm, I'm feeling so good. And I, as I, I have been already introduced, I think I, it wouldn't be bad for me to introduce Aris. So if she, she's going to be with us, all right. Uh, so I would like to introduce Ara because you guys have already like met her in some hall, but uh, Ara is has a really uh, like huge story. She has done many things at her age. At her age of ten, she started like being inspired by by her her environment of uh, calls, and after that, she she got passionate about sustainable sustainable uh, development, and over time, she was like. Uh, creating uh creating initiatives 
for engaging youngs in Indonesia. By the way, she lives in Indonesia, right? So over time, she has like uh, creating this this project, like Team Changer. You guys should know a bit more about the, this initiative. And after uh, after COVID, she she has also like uh, tried to to uh, to fight uh, uh, against these these things that always that is like uh, is promoting so many like bad things in in Indonesia. So especially right now, uh, Era is like working uh, with us in Ashoka, which is incredible. She's like helping the the us uh, like in the in the in the process in the development to ever to do and to make everyone a change maker so i feel so happy to be with you era you're amazing i i, I totally recommend you guys go see a bit more of ara because i couldn't ever say so like her what she is because she's she does so many incredible things you gotta go look further that's so kind of you, Luan. And I think that's also thanks to the team and also to great friends in Asher Grand Education First community as well, like RJ and Luan. So I'm really excited to be here because it's going to be a three way conversation. And um, since today we're going to talk about the people and planet, let's start off with how much trouble are we actually in? Um, what is actually the urgency to act on climate change and environmental issues today? So Juan, would you like to, to go first? Me? Okay, okay, thank you. Um, actually, uh, the, the thing is that we are not like acting at all uh we're 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 having like as greta used to say many blah 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 but we are not like acting for for sure so the 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 thing the real problem now uh that that i see that we are like really uh uh, tr uh facing so much is that mainly because of the of these we, we need to to charge we as youth we need to 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 charge and to, to ask for the politicians' real actions. So we gotta we gotta go in there. We gotta go not not only uh, uh, like on, on the news. We gotta go in, in our in our city council and like ask local locally. I think we we are so used to uh, ex for example in Brazil especially we, we have like in the in the federal um, uh, area. In, uh, in the federal in the national area it's really hard uh, to 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 make real changes but we we usually forget of that we can do local actions that we can make uh, the, that we can ask the, the the our city council in our city councils with our mayor and everything else so that's how we can make change but and really do something because unfortunately what we seen what we seen as like real many trouble because everyone knows that climate change is a reality everyone knows that this the food system is in trouble so why they do just don't do nothing so yeah we just gotta uh that's that's the real problem you know that's what i what i see as the, the main problem because it's not about information anymore everybody has the information they just need to to act and this is the problem as i see Thank you, Luan. I agree that we have to act now if you want to actually solve this problem. Uh, how about you, RJ? What do you think are the state of our climate crisis right now? Right. Now, we're, when we're talking about how danger, how much danger are we in now, I have a different approach comparing to Luan. Because especially in, in my country where I live in Indonesia, we're missing one point which is identifying the problem. Not a lot of people know what the problem is. And when people don't know what the problem is, how can we come up with a solution? How can we come up with the right solution for the right problems? Because coming, coming from a background of electronic waste, um, from the issue of environmental and technology, 
I see that people only see one side of technology, which is the advancement, where you get new devices every year, where you get these new things every year, but you never think of what happens when those devices are broken, when they're thrown away, when they became toxic materials. That is the part where people haven't think of, and that is the problem. So we have a long way to go. And if we don't, if we can't even identify the problems and create preventive actions, well, I, I always say this to people, if you ever watch WALL-E, the movie, who ever watched that, the world can be like that one day. And I, I really don't, I really don't. I still love this earth. And going back to the question again, how, how, how much are we in danger? Well, we don't even know what the real problem is. So how can we come up with a solution when we don't even know? I, I agree. I think we should acknowledge that it is happening and that we should understand the costs, the consequences to be able to treat it right as well. And if emissions actually continue to rise unchecked, the risks are profound and you have to understand that. And as young people, we cannot just be, you know, simply outraged and anxious about the future of our planet, but also craft real solutions to actually address the problems. Um, coming back to you again, Luan, uh, because I found it unique that through your initiative, CASA, you specifically address the hunger and deforestation issues in Brazil at the same time. Can you explain more what exactly is the relationship or linkage between the two issues and how, how did you came up with the, with the solutions? Thank you for the question. Um, basically, when I first got in, uh, in high school, it was the first time that I had contact with philosophy classes. So in my first philosophy classes, my teacher has put a, 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 char, a chair in the table, in, in the top of the table. So he made us and he asked us to, to answer what were we seeing in there, what, what was we seeing. And he teached in this class for us to see the things in another view, in another option, optic. So after that, he made us uh, realize the things around us in a different optic, in an optic that we could be, that we could make the difference in what we are seeing. So in the way to, to my home, I realized that I pass every day that I walk through every day for through a river called Una and my city is São Bento do Una. So it has the name of this of the city in this river it, so it was but at the same time it was pretty weird because the people were cutting the 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 trees around it the people were putting trash on it and at the same time i live in the in the in the climate in a semi-arid climate which is too 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 much like a uh, uh scarcity scarcity in a sense of water so we've been past like six months six months without like raining, six months without like uh, water in the, uh, that we can like drink, you know, the people got to take on the peat water many times. So it was so controversial for me to see that reality. And at the same time, uh, see that environmental problems and the hunger that I used to see every day in my community, I realized that I that, that I was in the middle of the problem, like seeing friends, because for me it was usual for me to see like friends that were going to the school mainly because of the food. But after these, these classes, I started thinking differently. And I took for me this, the, these two areas, like the environmental cause and the, the food cause. So mm -hmm. after seeing all of these two cause, I, I, I linked, the, with the, tr the fruit trees that I used to pass every day and eat like some fruits, but many times that fruits were wasted, but at the same time, so controversial because how can that food be wasted, that healthy food be wasted? And, and, I, and I every day see many, many children being like uh, with hunger. So it was so controversial for me. So then that's when I created Arbo Initiative, one of the initiative of CASA, which the, the main organization. And in Arbo, we plant fruit trees in all, in all over 14, 14 states of Brazil now, uh, planting fruit trees in public space from low-income community. So we plant them and we also map in a mobile app that I created where the people can, everybody can map a 
fruit trees and over time people are like finding food, fruit for free in everywhere around the world. So that's how I, I could link and with the help of many others, uh, when, when I was saying, for example, in the beginning that we, we need to act, the people need to act, it's mainly because of that. I did it in the beginning of Arbo. I would never know uh, how, how I would do that, how I would solve anything. But I just started because I needed to do something. I, I'm not 100% of nothing of, of how can I solve any problem, but I know that I can do something now as little as it is. So if I already start, that will be something. And over time, I'll be learning. We are here to make mistakes and to learn with it. We're not 100% and never. But what we should do, what we are sure about it, that the climate change is making my people hunger. The climate change is, is killing so many people. So we need to act now uh, as fast as possible, even though we are not 100% about anything, you know? Right, that's an amazing answer, Luan. You have a very great mindset. And to, to think like that, it, it, it needs courage and, and, and it needs courage. But going back to where you start and people come here to know how you start. Now, can you tell us a little bit more, how do you think globally about a global issue and then implementing it at a local action? thinking global and acting local. What's your approach in that? Yeah, I think it's um, for me to have this possibility, it's been such a privilege, which is not the, 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 the situation of many Brazilians. I had the privilege to have a crazy philosopher teacher to, that made me think differently, but this is not the reality of many in Brazil. Um, and I think in the world, uh, in all on the road. So think uh, critically is not a thing. And it's not, it's not a thing that r happens usually. So I think that Arbo is doing it, uh, is, is trying to do it with the ambassador program, like uh, uh, selecting and bringing, uh, engaging youngs all over. In a, we are now like engaging one, more than 130 youngs in all over 14 countries, co mm -hmm. states of Brazil. So, um, I think this is really important to, to really make these things, you know, because it doesn't really matter if you if I, if you are on the cop now, like talking with leaders, if you don't really do solve like the, the problem of your uh, community. That's the beginning. You should you should just change your community where we are, and after that you can try to, to change something bigger. So because that would be way easier if you if you cannot like try to change your, your community, how are you supposed to change something bigger? I think it's uh, it's all about that, you know, it's all about like um, doing what you can in, in in the in the situations you have. I when I started Project Agua, I I never I didn't have like one real in my one dollar in my in my in my baggage. I didn't have nothing, but I started because I wanted to do. I I, I couldn't stop like seeing that 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 thing every day. Like when I go to school every day, so that was something that was repeating my mind as a you know a, a, a oral, oral movie. So, anyways, it's it's all about that. Like, uh, and that's how uh, so. Fine, uh, ending here. I, I think, uh, think uh, acting lo local basically is a way to think global. When you start acting local, in somehow later you're gonna think global. So that's the importance to start right now and yeah, just do it. Right. You you have a very huge urge of, of starting the one, and you have so good compassion in what you're doing right now. Moving on to Ara, actually, I have a different approach, which because, you know, solutions, there's no wrong solutions. It's just different approaches. So I want to kind of twist it up. What about you, Ara? What do you think about acting, thinking local and acting globally? Because my question to the one was thinking global and acting locally. Now to you is thinking local acting globally. What do you think about that, Gara? Right. I think it's also the beauty of 
you know, the diversity in the way that we approach things and how we are, what is actually our thought process in addressing a problem as well. And for me, it was the other way around than what Luan just shared before, because at first I felt really overwhelmed and powerless actually by the fact that climate change and also the pandemic issues are affecting people and nature all around the world. And sitting in a small town in Indonesia, I wasn't so sure about what I can do to better the situation until I shifted my perspective to think of the community around me. So instead of thinking globally, I actually thinking locally. What are we struggling with? What do my neighbors need? What can I contribute? And then act globally, meaning how you can inspire and connect with other people across borders to help one another and realize a shared vision which has been increasingly feasible thanks to the advancement of technology. Um, a little example with my current initiative, uh, the AHA project, it was actually started during the early days of the pandemic when I looked outside of the window and noticed that children were playing around on the street with their friends without masks during school hours, which made me wonder, you know, aren't they supposed to stay at home and attend online classes or so? And this led me into a deeper concern that millions of children out there do not have the infrastructure and the access to the internet, hence the online educational services as well. And many of their parents are not ready as well to facilitate the learning at home. So I gathered my friends uh, who have the same passion and concern to team up and create solutions. And we develop creative educational materials and work hand in hand with the local champions who live in or near the villages to produce these toolkits locally and facilitate the learning in the neighborhood. Uh, I think here we want to emphasize that learning is not just about memorizing the textbook, but having that discovery and aha moments from our surroundings, building the empathy and relationship with our nature. And that's why our modules do not only cover school subjects, but also social, cultural, and environmental knowledge. And talking about acting globally, it doesn't mean like you have to act all across the world, but you have to connect with you know, people outside of your city as well. And starting with something local, um, this action has spread across 64 villages in 18 provinces and reaching over 4,500 children in Indonesia. And you know, going back to you, RJ, I think this is also the case on how you got connected with the US agents across the country, um, right? And you know, talking about how technology supports our movement, uh, in this digital era, everyone is encouraged to develop innovations and try to be the best when it comes to technological development. I personally see it as a two-edged sword. It can be a good thing, and but at the same time, it can also, you know, uh, lead us to more consumptions and also electronic waste. How do you think technology breakthrough can and will help us to, to solve the problems around us? And what should we do to actually ensure that the better edge of the sword is bigger and sharper uh, than the undesirable one? That's a perfect analogy, Ara. It's a two-sided sword. You can use it as an advantage to other people, but also can hurt you at the same time. Now, it's about actually, uh, when we're talking about the investment of technology and how it can help us, it's about playing your role. Because not everyone can produce electronic devices, but everyone consumes it. Now, as a consumer, it's how you be a good consumer, be a wise, be a smart, and be a responsible consumer. Because you can't deny it. You can never deny the advancement of technology. It's just going to get better and better over the years. Things you see on TV, they're going to come true in about five to 10 years. I, I, I can bet on it. So it's how you use them because you can't deny the advancement of technology. And if, if you're asking me, will it help us more? Definitely, it will help us, but it goes back again to yourself on how you use it and how you take care of it when those devices are broken. We're always, we always have to think with sustainability, not just the span of when we're using it, but also when those devices are broken and what we're, ha what we're, what we're going to have to do with them. That's why I initiated the US RJ to provide Dropbox for people to throw away their electronic devices. So after they're broken, have a place, they have a facility, they have a box where they can throw it out. And it's 
those small things, those simple things is what really help us can create a better um, side of the sword that's taking the advantage and helping our lives to be better. And I think that's, that's the key, sustainability. Yeah, it looks so good to, to hear about you, about this, about your initiative, and how do you, how you, you really uh, are into it, you know? So, and as we can see, uh, like the trash thing is a, a real problem. And if we like get into it, we can be actually really crazy because it's not easy, it's not so simple to solve. But in the middle of all of these troubles and all of these problems, I'd like to know what keeps you optimistic optimist about, about the subject? I mean, when we're, because <laughs> I have to be honest, I've been working for e-waste RJ for about seven to eight years. And the topic, I mean, working on something, it, I have to be honest, sometimes it bores me. So what keeps me optimistic is, of course, because the issue is um, developing and I need to put more attention to it. But really what keeps me going optimistic is that the voices that I have around me communities like Ashoka, meeting you, Luan, meeting you, Ara, and having my team, it was RJ, is what really makes me like, we can solve this issue. Because we're always talking about the same issue every day, but what keeps me going is when I meet new people that have the same excitement as me. And it's just amazing to connect with those people. And I really do expect, and, and, and it's, it's limitless, you know? I, I don't need to talk with people who's in the same generation of me. I can really talk with someone who's older, who's younger, and that's the of being a change maker and having the same goal. So that's how I keep myself optimistic. By the way, before Luan and you guys continue the conversation, I think I kind of have to jump on the next webinar after this. Is it okay, guys, if I leave early? Yes, no worries at all, RJ, because I think we understand that after this, you're going to have to present the COP. Uh, 26 as well, representing Indonesia. So good luck on that. And I hope you all the best. Uh, looking forward to your updates as well after sharing it with the world, you know. <laughs> yes, thank you, Kara, Luan. I had a great 30 minute talk with you. And I'll see you guys in another time. Bye, everyone. Bye, RJ. Thank you so much. Pretty good. He's so nice. I like to, to meet him. So let's, we should be finishing now, but I would like you uh, to, to ask to you, like uh, the same to, that I asked him, like what, in, in a, in a um, amount of so many problems, especially you that get in contact with so many youngs, like trying to solve many different problems, what makes you optimistic? What makes you optimistic in a, in a seeing so many problems as you're supposed to, to see. Thanks, Juan, for, for the question. I think I resonate a lot with what RJ shared earlier about, you know, I think the fact that more and more people, including and especially young people, care about the issues around them and have the courage to speak up, to demand change, create solutions and take actions. And it shows that I am, and we are not alone actually in this journey. Let, let's support each other and work hand in hand together. Um, and I think in terms of like people and planet, we have seen also some commitments in the private and public sector over the years. So that's also keep me optimistic and also young change makers like you and RJ and other uh, change makers out there are also providing creative solutions and empower you know, other people to take action. So, I think there are hopes, actually, um, if we act now. But at the same time, we should not let our guards down by these you know, improvements or, or other promises by governments and organizations. We have to keep an eye on them, speak up, and also innovate um, for solutions to make the change happen. So do not just sit back and relax. Uh, we have to act now and, and try to look around you look inside you and then connect both of them to actually make a difference. So that's pretty much it. Um, what about you, Luan? What keeps you optimistic before we end the question? Okay, thank you for the question. I feel that 
this is uh, like as any activist, we have like uh, ups and downs, and this is pretty normal, especially for me in Brazil. We have like now what more than 125 uh, millions of people, it's more than half of the population who are not like eating uh, as they should eat. So we have more than 15 like millions of people like with hunger, with, with extreme poverty. So it's hard. It's not easy to, 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 to wake up and just say, oh, I'm gonna do that. But really, as, as much as you guys told, when we see other people around uh, like doing the same, you know, that they want, when we see that like the, the brave, how brave they are to, to change, even though they don't have the possibilities. Like when I see the ambassadors from Brazil, from Arbo Project, we now have like more than 130 ambassadors. When I see their stories, I have stories of uh, ambassadors who are selling their video games to buy trees in Brazil, to buy fruit trees and plants in their community. So they are like getting out of their comfort zone, like selling their things to make the change. So this is what inspires me, that there are people as much as me who are putting out, who are getting that, who are not like stop, uh, like um, they, they are not doing like uh, fun stuff. They are just working because they want to see the reality and they believe in the change. So. Uh, I think when you, when you strongly want uh, something, nothing like makes you makes you like uh, get down. Of course, we get down, but nothing makes you uh, uh, give up of something. And what moves extremely for sure, it's what moves me. What makes me optimistic at all? It's make it's to see these people, to see these youngs that still believes and and they strongly want. So it makes me so so excited. And yeah, and I, and I love to see when I go out and see a fruit tree in the street and I, oh my God, this tree I planted and there are so many people like eating. So can you imagine like we are now planting 2,500 uh, uh, trees in Brazil. So imagine all of these trees, how many people are not supposed to, to feed of it. So this is also something really incredible, like to work in Arbo, it's, it's the, the it's to know that people are going, uh, this is going to be good for the planet. This is going to be good for the people because of eating. And this is go gonna be good for the urbanization though, because uh, people in, in, in favela, people in peripheric, uh, in marginalized communities in Brazil, they suffer so much with like, uh, with, uh, like education, like the, they don't have like a good space mainly for educating for studying at home because mainly at home it's like crazy it's it's hard to, to concentrate it's hard to like uh many times th th their people their parents doesn't even support them to to study or to make something different you know because their reality is the drugs their reality it's not uh not to to be something to to do something besides what what you could besides what your area what what you com your community says you to do so uh these places are like creating environments like uh with trees with uh where you can go in there and read a book where you can become a leader of your community and say i did it and uh, we are together you know it's all about abu and that's why i love i'm passionate and i live my life for it. Thank you. That, that's great. Uh, well, I don't really like this metaphor, but it's like killing two birds with one stone. Um, and you don't one thing, but there's also, there are a lot of impacts that actually um, came up from your initiative in Casa and Apple. Um, and it sounds simple on, you know, like hearing other people's story in what actually you know, the local situation is and what has the impact been for them as, a, an, as an individual and seeing how the trees grow. It's, it sounds simple, but it actually gives us a lot of, you know, I think energy as well. And also there's a, a, a certain satisfaction that we see um, on how we have, you know, our initiatives have been impacting other people as well. Well, um, We've come to an end of, of this session, time flies, and we're actually six minutes over now. 
Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to answer some of your questions today, but make sure to look out for a follow-up email with the link to today's recording and highlights to browse and share as well. And we hope you will join next time. Welcome Change is a weekly series about the future we want to live in and the role we can play. Uh, we have conversations coming up on outsourcing human rights investigations in Syria and Yemen and healing and radical hope for Black women in the U.S. So you can sign up at the link on the chat. Uh, and I hope you all have a good day, uh, everyone, and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in.